Hello and welcome to the 53rd video in this series for beginners programming in C. So after a bit of a Christmas break, hopefully back into making a few more videos now, and I want to actually go back to the code that we were looking at in chapter 45 because I didn't finish off um, talking about linked lists and they're very important and I want to add a few more things to that, that code now after having a little detour with writing data to files. And you remember that I've got the code in this uh, ch53.c file here, which will be available as usual for download at the bottom of the video in the information. Um, I've got the exact code that we had in chapter 45 at the end, and this was linked list. If I just bring over the terminal here and just go to compile and run this code. So I'll just run the code. Where are we? You remember that we type add and it asks for the name and speed of a car and can type add and it's add um, sorry add and enter and then Audi and 200 and if I type print then I can type the list of the cars that we have so we've got car 1, car 2, Audi and Ford and you remember that the important thing about this was that we weren't using a predefined array to do this we were using what's called a linked list where we had this racing car structure where inside the structure was a pointer to another racing car and down here we when we click add call the add car function and inside the add car function we allocate the memory for our new car and then set up the pointer of the previously entered car to point to this new car so that way we have effectively our what's known as linked list now, I won't go into any more detail about that code from that video. I'll assume you've watched it, or if not, then, and you already understand singly linked lists, then you can probably understand very quickly. And importantly, of course, we have the cleanup function here that we call at the end that frees all the memory that we've allocated. Okay, but there's something, so there's an enhancement we can do to this, what's known as a singly linked list, and we can actually make this a, what's known as a doubly linked list. And the way we do this is, as well as having a pointer to the next car in our list of cars, or if you imagine a line of traffic, we'll actually have a pointer to the previous car in the list as well. And then what I'll look at in future videos uh, after this one was actually look at inserting and removing at specific places in the list as well. So what we're going to need to do here is we're going to need to add in another racing car structure. Uh, S and I can't spell this morning as usual so I'm going to be lazy and copy that and we'll just call this a pointer to previous and what we need to do is we need to assign this previous pointer to point to the previous car in our list and all we need to do to do that is actually go into our add car function and make some changes inside here so the first thing we need to do is we have our new car created here and what we need to do now is we'll do something that actually I should have done in the previous video. We'll just set the pointer in new car, so the next pointer, to equal to null. And we'll also now set the new pointer, our previous car pointer, also equal to null. I should have done that really in the chapter 45 as well actually for the next because if we weren't going to be assigning next then we need to really have this pointer assigned to nothing rather than just leaving it hanging around. So what we do is we say if the previous car is not equal to null, so we had a previous car entered in the list, then the next car is our current car. But now what we can also do is we can say that our new car and the previous car is now equal to the previous and that's all there is to it so we've now already changed our list from a singly linked list to a double linked list where essentially all we said is okay we're setting the previous car's next car to the new car that we've created and now for the new car we've created obviously we'll set the previous car in the list to the previous car simple as that's all there is to it and now what we need to do is we need to print this list and we need to make a couple of changes to the printing code to be able to print the list properly. So the first thing we'll do is we'll make a couple of racing car pointers here. So what we'll do is we'll say the racing car and we'll call this one the car ahead 
pointer and set this to null and what we'll also do is set the racing car and we'll call it the car behind pointer and we'll set this also to null and what we're going to do is we're going to change this printing function so that instead of just printing the name and the speed of the current car in the list we're going to print its ahead and its behind cars as well so we'll say what's ahead with a percentage s because we'll print the name and what car is also behind with a percentage s as well so we need to add those in now and we need to actually only print something here, a string here, if the pointer in question, so starting with the head car, is not null. And what I'm going to do use here is a shortcut for using an if or else. And I'll write it out and then I'll explain it, because when you first see it, it looks very, very confusing, but it's actually very simple and very useful. So I'm going to put inside a bracket here, and I'm going to say a head equal to null. I'm going to say a question mark and then I'm going to put in speech brackets none, a colon, and then I'm going to take the ahead pointer and get the name. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the previous and then explain what exactly is, sorry, the behind and explain exactly what's been done here. So this question mark and colon here, I'll separate these out actually by a space. I like to do them without myself, but it's probably easier to read with a space is it just a shortcut for an is an, uh, an an if sorry and else so all you do all the compiler does is evaluates the expression here and if this value is true then it returns what comes after the question mark but before the colon otherwise it returns what comes after the colon so we're saying here if our head pointer is nothing so null we're not pointing to anything then we'll take the string none otherwise we'll take the string name from the ahead car and likewise for the behind pointer. So that's a little bit of um, printing done there. The thing we need to do next though obviously is we actually need to get the cars for the ahead and behind pointers here. So the way we do this we'll say that if the current car, or in fact we don't even need to do that, what we can do is we can say that the ahead is equal to the current car and then the next and then obviously we can say for the behind and I'm sorry if you can hear mowing noises outside it's very annoying so the behind is equal to the current car and then the previous now remember these are set to null if nothing exists in the list at this particular point so we can be safe in the knowledge that ahead and behind are null if, no, if these don't actually exist there is no next or previous car for current car and the only other thing we need to do is once we've actually printed this information out, obviously, because we're setting the current car to the next car, we, ne we need to remember to reset ahead and behind back to null. Otherwise, they'll remain pointing to what they were pointing to previously, like this. Okay, so now that we've done that, uh, we're ready actually to have a look at printing our list. So I'll just save this code here and off screen just go for I quit out of the program which you can't see and just compile and make sure I haven't made any spelling errors and I don't seem to have done so just type clear and now bring the console back over and let's go to look at running the program so if just type add now and let's add a Ford and 100 and now let's type print to print the list and now you can see it's saying okay we've got our Ford and there's nothing ahead and nothing behind the Ford in the list so let's add another one and let's add the Ferrari with a speed of 200 and now let's print the list again and now you can see that the Ford now has changed the Ford actually knows that there's a Ferrari ahead of it in the list and the Ferrari knows that it's got a Ford behind it in the list and the Ford of course has nothing behind it and the Ferrari has nothing ahead of it so let's add another car in and let's add the Audi with a speed of 300 and now print the list again and now you can see that the Ford still knows the Ferrari's ahead, nothing's behind. But now the Ferrari knows that the Audi is ahead and the Ford is behind. And now the Audi has nothing ahead and the Ferrari behind. And this is what's known as a doubly linked list, where the items in the list have a pointer to or a link to the next item in the list and also the previous item in the list. And an application of this, for example, is you may have noticed if you've ever looked on my website or anything that I've recently put an iOS game out called Traffic Light Mania. 
and the traffic that's uh, running over the board, it's a free app by the way, so you can play it, um, the cars that are running over the roads on the on the maps that you play, the levels you play, are all linked on each road exactly in the manner that we've done in this tutorial. Each time they complete a turn and turn onto a new road, the first thing they do is look for the relevant road they're on, what's ahead and what's behind, and insert themselves into a list. And the program maintains a doubly linked list of all of the cars on each road. So each car can very quickly say what's behind me and what's ahead of me and then look for collisions, etc, etc, rather than having to iterate through all of the other cars each time on the board, which speeds things up. So this has a direct and very useful application and is used a lot. Okay, so that's it then for this video. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll look at actually inserting and removing items from this doubly linked list. So I hope you've enjoyed that. It's made some sense. I'm sorry I was a little bit rusty, but I haven't done a video for about three or four weeks. Uh, see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.